kicking off for the Tigers. Pedro Suarez, the sophomore from Hialeah, Florida, a little guy who has a potent foot. And here we go. Deep into the end zone, a few yards back goes Robert Jones, and he downs it, and Alabama will take over first and 10 from the 20. From the 27, fourth and three, Tank Williamson back to punt. Lately, he's been punting the ball well. Not a bad punt. Fielding on the 35-yard line, LSU brought down immediately. Saul Graves, the senior, the fifth-year senior from Monroe, Louisiana, gets the start, and he's back to pass on first down, complete over the middle to the freshman tight end, Harold Bishop from Tuscaloosa. Third and five, the defense loves this situation. 12-12 on the clock. And it looks like they had Alabama jumping. Graves a free down, and he completes the pass. There's Mike Archer. He is on the hot seat, a record of 26-16-1. You wouldn't think so in four years. But at LSU, where football is king, he's on the hot seat. Another completed pass. Knocked out of bounds, a gain of about eight. Nifty pass from Saul Graves. Here we are, second and uh, first and ten. Or no, second and two, I'm sorry. And flags down everywhere as the handoff goes up the middle. Harvey Williams, sensational as a freshman and even more sensational as a sophomore till he suffered a terrible knee injury. Back to pass, rolling out his Graves, looking for a receiver and cannot find one, but he does eventually out of bounds and the reception. Scott Ray, another freshman with a nice grab. Graves showing a lot of poise, first and 10 from the 16, 9.22 on the clock. The handoff to Harvey Williams who busts outside, gets free for a first down or at least close to it, knocked out of bounds by McMillan. Again, Alabama's defense has not a lot of touchdown in 12 quarters. Graves calls the signals and hands off to Williams who fumbles the football and Alabama recovers. Fourth and four. Tank Williamson, his second punt in the afternoon. Nails it. Pretty good. The fair catch called on the 35-yard line. LSU will take over. Again, that gang tackling has become a characteristic of this Alabama defense. Fifth in the country, allowing under 100 yards rushing per game, 94 to be exact. Third and eight. The freshman Luke back to pass. And he finds Harvey Williams over the middle. First down, LSU. Again, great protection from the LSU offensive line. First and 10 from the 49. Harvey Williams pitch left. And he gets close to another first down. Second and 10 on the 34. Luke rolls out. He's going to run it. And decides just to go down without sustaining a blow. Third and one. 4.21 on the clock. Chad Luke, the redshirt freshman, looking it over. Harvey Williams gets the first down. Luke calling an audible, changing the play at the line of scrimmage, and he's back to pass. Looks like they caught Alabama in a blitz. First down, LSU, the completed pass to Wesley Jacob. Pedro, Pedro Suarez. Attempts the field goal, and it's good. LSU takes the lead, 3-0, 59 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Tank Williamson, his third punt of the afternoon. So far, he's averaging 38 yards on each punt. And this one taken on the 32-yard line by LSU and brought down. And back at quarterback is Saul Graves. Mike Archer makes another switch, and Graves goes down. Byron Holbrooks the sack. There you see it, 23 sacks, make it 24. And the play action fake the reverse. Oh, oh my, Saul Graves nailed in the fumble. They call it an incomplete pass. The only person he could have possibly thrown to was number 69, Andy Martin, his offensive guard. Graves again has trouble and chalk up another sack for the tied sack exchange. Eric Curry gets his sixth of the year. Byron Holbrooks really clogged up things in the middle too and took Blake Miller 
And two other linemen out of the picture, which open things up. Chris Anderson deep for the punt. And a good kick sends Anderson all the way back to the 24-yard line. Trying to get to his wall, and he does. Breaking it free, cutting back. All the way down to the 47-yard line, Chris Anderson. First and 10 from the 48. The pitch to Robert Jones. Robert looking for room to roam, and he gets up a gain of three or four. Busky in motion. And the handoff up the middle to Kevin Turner, who bulls forward for a couple. As everyone knows, he uh, shot off a part of his foot. Uh, people never thought he'd play football again. But here he is blocking now for Robert Jones as the pitch goes to Georgia's side. Yes. And Robert gets the first down. Auburn now leads Southern Miss 12-0. The Tigers always seem to have the Golden Eagles number. Florida. I see Lamar Russell back in the game again too, Greg. Florida punishing Georgia in Jacksonville, 38 to seven. Anderson, the pitch right, and it looks like he's going to go in for the touchdown. Yes, indeed. Alabama has a lead, six to three, on the run by Chris Anderson of 30 yards. Third and three from the 22. Loop back to pass. And he sacked George Thornton. Bump. Bumps him to the turf. The third sack of the game for the Crimson Tide. There's nowhere to throw to. Nowhere downfield. Brian Griffith. His second punt of the afternoon. The last one was a good one, but Anderson ran it back. Jeff Mitchell now calls for the fair catch at the 33. Martin Houston lining up behind Hollingsworth. Whips. And it's a first down. Steve Buskey, who always seems to catch at least one pass every game, gets the first down. Hollingsworth comes to the line, fourth and one. Robert Jones falls forward. He's got it. Second and ten. Lamont. Lamont Russell gets a first down for Alabama. Second and ten now from the 30. Robert Jones working his way to the outside. And he's hit hard and brought down, but a nice gain of five or six. He'll kick it from the 35, so make it a 45-yard field goal for Philip Doyle. And he boots it. Did he hook it a little left? He sure did. He hooked it left, pulled it. Speaking of the kickers again, uh, Van Tiffen on the field today as they honored the uh, team of the decade for the University of Alabama. And... Van was the last All-American kicker for the Tide, and this year they're touting Philip Doyle in that same role as the All-American kicker. And a lot of those Alabama fans, when they announced uh, Van Tiffin's name, I think they remembered that kick he made at Birmingham against Auburn because I think he got one of the largest ovations of any of the players that were introduced. The last time, uh, 1988, these two teams met here, the Tigers won 19-18. to Philip Doyle had a chance to win it on that 52-yard oh, yes. field goal, just barely missed. In 86, it was 14 to 10, uh, 84, 16, 14. So I think we're in store for another close ball game. The deep kick taken on the two by Wayne Williams, who brings it up and breaks it loose. And he's finally tackled from behind by Rip Mitchell. That was Odell Beckham who broke free. Alabama with that 3-4 uh, defense, three down linemen. The two linebackers, the pitch left going to Harvey Williams. Again, strong pursuit, but Williams found a hole and gets the first down. McMillan knocks him out. Third and eight from the 44. Great. Plenty of time. Nobody open. Bring on the punting team for LSU. Another strong stand for the tie D. Tank is punted three times. There you see it. Ever since he was inserted in shortly into the Tennessee game, he has been a solid punter. Tank He's gotten better and better. Look at that boom. Boy, wow. what a kick. All the way down inside the 10. Alabama will get to it. 10 tackle the runner on the 
two yard line. Third and five from the seven, 8.55 on the clock. Loop has Harvey Williams who breaks free for the first down. Nice play up to the 23. Chad Loop having a decent afternoon. He's thrown some safe passes, but they've been on target. Third and six. He's brought down. Another sack for Eric Curry. Turner and Anderson. This is Chris. The pitch back to Gary. Wide open. Interception by Wayne Williams. I said wide open because running down the left sideline by himself, Lorenzo Cole didn't have a man within 20 yards of him. The Gene is telling him. Brian Griffith will punt for the fifth time. Having a good run here. The win behind him. Chris Anderson fields it at the 47 and he's nailed. Second and five on the 43. We're down to 440 on the clock. This game is moving along. Robert Jones hammers forward, getting close to the first down. The youngest uh, coach in Division I football. Big third down, Doug. Martin Houston pulls forward, and it looks like he got it. He gets it twice. It looked like he had it the first time. No whistle, and he got it again. I think he lost it the second time, though. Robert Jones, the man they go to in short yardage, is right behind Gary Hollingsworth. Turner in motion. Jones, first down. The pitch to Robert Jones, who has been a workhorse. And he darts his way up two yards shy of the first down, a gain of four. Third and two, Alabama four out of 11 on third down conversions. They'd like to bring that number up, and it looks like they did. Junior Sewell falls forward for what appears to be a tied first down. Pitch right. Robert Jones cuts back. Gets close. Second and seven. 24 seconds to go, third period. Kevin Turner fights his way up to the five. Philip Doyle missed his first field goal of the day, trying a 22-yarder, and it is good. 10-7 Alabama, but for LSU, a moral victory there. That was key. The most outstanding play in the third quarter, which changed the field position, was Tank Williamson's 67-yard punt. Whew. That changed the entire course of the third quarter. What a boot. Philip Doyle had been kicking him deep in the end zone last week, but this one's short. On the 10, fielded by Odell Beckham, and he's brought down to the 22-yard line, flagged down on the play. It's a clip, so they'll take it back. The field position is going to be so critical for LSU right now. The Riverboat gambler Mike Archer goes to an untested quarterback, a man who has not played all season. His first pass of the year, intercepted. Scott Hunter, you read it perfectly. Alabama scores the touchdown. Uh oh, what a shoot. 11.44 to go in the ball game. The tied by two touchdowns. Whoa, a high snap. He does a fine job of getting it and getting it away. That was touched by an LSU man and uh, he catapulted it through the end zone. So it looks like the tide, if they hold on here, would be 6 and 4 heading to the Auburn game. The pass to Kevin Turner. First down, Alabama. Third and 12, the screen. Nobody is there. Oh, that was a dangerous, dangerous pass to win incomplete. We're just guessing, but there were a lot of people down uh, downstairs. Cheer went up, nothing happening on the field, so I'm just guessing, but... Uh, a lot of the people may be listening to the Auburn game. Flag down. Tank Williamson was hit after he punted the ball. It will be roughing the kicker in Alabama. We'll get a first down. The field totally engulfed in shadows now. Junior Sewell up the middle. Breaks a couple of tackles. A gain of eight for Junior Sewell. The crowd is being picked up here. Listen to the crowd, Doug. 
A sophomore from Abbeville, a combination of Alabama playing well and Auburn losing has this crowd in a frenzy. And Chris Anderson breaks it for a touchdown. Alabama, Chris Anderson, 46 yards. But again, there's no replay booth in college football. Robert Stewart. Big Stu. That time a great play by Charles Gardner sitting back. They just announced it. Southern Miss 14. Auburn 12 and the crowd is going wild. Third and 15. Luke brought down by Robert Stewart. They'll have to put it away. Jerry trying to hit him, throws a crisp pass downfield, probably put a little more air under it, let Lamont run under it, would have had six there. So. All right, Tank Williamson with a punt back to the 18-yard line. Taking it there is Vincent Fuller, and he's brought down by a host of Alabama players around the 32-yard line. Well, I don't think that the Auburn football team is taking on Pat Dye's personality. I really don't think it's done that. Possibly he had so many athletes who are so good that he might have just uh, let up on them or whatever he will, but that got his personality onto that football team. I know Pat Dye, tough guy, hard-nosed, and he just didn't adopt his personality. You know, like Coach Oliver mentioned, uh, it's just incredible in this modern age of football that a defense can keep another team's offense out of the end zone. Oh, my. The big lineman gets a chance to run, and big George Thornton left a part of Saul Graves into the turf. I think we'll see maybe some of the uh, front line guys, but I, I bet he puts some of the second group in there and gives them a chance to play here late in the game. Uh-oh. Breaking free, number 27, Vincent Fuller, and he's brought down at about the 13-yard line. So, looks like the first group coming back in. Third and 10 from the 15, 129 on the clock. Luke will be back to pass, and you better believe they'll try to get on fourth if they don't make it here. End zone. Back to Wow. George T. Tuscaloosa, Gene Stallings can look back and say, I'm over 500. Five victories, four defeats. 